Cape San Blas, Florida. A family vacation turned violent moments after 15-year-old Craig Huto and his brother Brian began fishing off the Florida panhandle. When we got there, it was about 10.30, and it really wasn't that hot. So, I mean, it was good fishing weather. And there was a school of fish there, and the water was really murky, and uh, there were seagulls and birds just diving in and catching fish. As Craig and his brother ventured deeper into the water, they were unaware that two days earlier, a bull shark had killed a 15-year-old girl just 80 miles down the coast. We were catching fish left and right. They had come across a school of whiting, a favorite fish for sharks. And we were about waist deep, and that was just when I felt a bump on my leg, kind of a little punch, but it didn't hurt. I jumped back, and I said, what was that? It was an eight-foot bull shark showing characteristic behavior as it sized up its prey. And I was praying that it was a little kid doing the same thing I was doing to my mom the previous day. And so I jumped back just looking around for somebody to come out of the water. And that was when it just grabbed me on my right leg and just took me under. Craig couldn't breathe, and the shark wouldn't let go of his leg. I knew it was a shark, but I remember saying to myself, like, this is a dream. I need to wake up right now. And uh, right after I said that, I'd come out of the water. Craig was bleeding heavily, and the bull shark wasn't about to back down. I looked over Brian, and I was screaming, help, help, help. Fighting to stay afloat, Craig knew that his brother Brian was the only person who could save his life. The look on his face, it was just the terror. I mean, he was just panicked and he was just yelling to help and then the shark kind of dragged me across the water a little bit and while I was doing that Brian swam over and grabbed me under my arm I was initially scared when I saw the fin and then I guess from that point on adrenaline takes over Brian was pulling Craig towards the shore but the shark continued to fight and refused to release him that shark could have dragged me all the way out in the ocean if Brian hadn't uh, swam over and stopped it. It was kind of weird seeing my blood in the water, but uh, I really wasn't thinking of how, how severe that was at the time. I was gasping for breath. I couldn't really breathe, and I was still trying to fight and just trying to stop losing all my blood. He didn't just bite and let go and swim away. He latched on and just stayed on and just swam with us all the way to the shore. That was when I kind of tried to take my hands under water and try to open the shark's mouth a little bit to just free my leg, and I didn't know that his teeth are like razor blades. Craig was nearly lifeless as he began to pass in and out of consciousness. My hands were just all tore up. I didn't feel that either. I didn't feel a thing. The shark was still on me all the way to about two feet of water, and right, that was when Dad and another stranger grabbed him on my arms. And at that time, Brian kind of took the shark and uh, kind of rolled him over a little bit out of the water. And that was when he hit it as hard as he could, like two or three times. And after he hit it, just let go and swam away. I didn't really know that I was safe until the next morning when I woke up. Craig was lucky to have survived such a brutal attack. The shark severed his femoral artery causing him to lose over two-thirds of his blood, and doctors were forced to amputate his right leg. Jeffrey Graham believes there were factors present that day which may have increased the likelihood of an attack on Craig. Fishermen in the water, chest deep, with bait, is just a natural attractant to sharks. Bait is going to put off the kinds of odors that sharks can pick up on and come in on. The bump Craig felt before the attack led Dr. Graham to conclude that it was most likely a bull shark. It comes up to something and actually bumps it, nudges it, sort of get a feeling of what it's like and then decides uh, to or not to bite it. We know from the general biology of bull sharks, they oftentimes live in areas where they can't see clearly. They may never see what they actually bite. Craig Huto is walking again with the help of a prosthetic leg. He intends to go back in the ocean, but with a new awareness. I think the reason 
that I had a shark attack was because uh, the conditions out in the ocean that day. There's a group of fish, and the shark was just feeding in that area, and uh, and it just ran into me. Now that I look back of it, I am thankful that I'm alive because uh, not many people get bit by a shark and lose two thirds of their blood and still survive. Next on Shark Attack Survivors.